All right, the things that you're going to be needing to switch over from a metal halide light to an LED conversion light. You're going to need a photo cell. These run about 10 bucks. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver and a flat screwdriver. You're going to need a couple spare wire nuts. A uh, cordless screwdriver is nice, but not necessarily needed. You probably will not need a pair of pliers, but they're good to have, and a pair of wire strippers, but they're good to have. These are the wall packs, standard wall pack. First thing you do before you do anything else is you make sure that either the power is off or the light timer is off and there's no power. There's going to be two screws on this side. One I've already removed. The door swings open. Now, one of the first things you will need to do is lift the door off. This will need to be cleaned, guaranteed. If the ballast in here has burned up, this will be blackened. It can be cleaned off with automotive style cleaners and then put in your dishwasher without any trouble. This reflector may be blackened. It needs to be cleaned off as good as possible. There's typically two screws in one of these. And this is the guts of your standard metal halide. You have a capacitor, a starter if you have a pulse start, and the ballast. Now, if you have a voltmeter, you should check between the ground wire and in here and make sure there's no power on. Once you confirm that there's no power on, you can start with the neutral, disconnect that, then the black wire coming from the power, sometimes they come from the back, sometimes they come from the side. This is typically the hot wire, so when you disconnect it, you pull the wire nut off, you hold that to the side, and you put the wire nut back on, just in case somebody goes and turns the power on or anything like that. You start disassembling All of the parts, you save all the screws, you're going to be needing them. For speed, a cordless drill or screwdriver really comes in handy. Now, I know you'll be working on a wall somewhere, so you have to be careful when you release the last screw because the last screw takes up the weight and these are heavy. These are like eight pounds. Now into here, Your electrical connections, the only two connections you need to disconnect once the power is disconnected are the two that come to the base. One is black, one is white. The black is the load or the hot wire and the white is the neutral and that's the shield. The black is the center and the white is the shield. So these two wires are disconnected, these wires are connect disconnected, all of this is free and if this is on the wall, this is where you need to hold on when you take this off because it's going to want to fall and it's heavy.
And if you pick up that, you'll see what I mean. That is between 7 and 10 pounds. All that needs to be left inside here is your power wire and these to start with. This still has a wire nut on. That is the hot wire. Even though you've already verified that there's no power on, you respect it like it's got power. Photo cell. You will need to take one of the caps off and that will be where you mount the photo cell. Take the nut off of here. Leave the rubber O-ring in place. In this case, I'm going to make the stripped portion of the wire just a little bit longer. Make sure the wire is twisted so it stays relatively neat. Put the wires through. And at this point, you'll thread it into place. should not have fallen off but it, again that is just for emergencies to prevent somebody from turning on the light switch and getting you shocked. Now the neutral wire will go to the same neutral as here. All of the neutrals are the same. It is not unusual to have to add a short piece of wire because one won't reach the other. And in this case I'm going to have to do just that. Stripped on both ends. Take this one. Twist the two wires together, put on a wire nut there. If it keeps spinning free, try a different wire nut or trim the very end of it off so that it's square on the end. Now it's tight. These two, again, the neutral wire. We'll use this one. It's a little larger gauge. All three neutral wires are t wired together electrically. It looks like I'm going to need to extend this one as well and that's purely because of the distance between that and this. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Now, 
your hot wire will be the last one that you wire together right here. So this one, the red indicates that that power is switched. When the photocell detects that it's time for it to go on, this becomes energized. Up until it detects that it's ready, it stays off. And that one tightens fine now. So you've got both wires going to the light right there. You've got all of the neutrals coming together, the hot wire and the hot wire for the photocell. Now it's time to put these together. If when you touch these you get a spark, you, you have power on. You need to make sure you have no power on. Otherwise, you have no power. Electrically, that is complete. The same shroud goes back in place. Electrically, this is wired. These right here are capable of anything from 100 volts up to 277 volts. It has its own voltage regulator in it. That is in. This should be aimed slightly up. And once you have it aimed upward, it should be tightened so it doesn't move. Do not over torque it. This is plastic and it will break. Your reflector is clean. Your lens is clean. back to its normal position. Close this. Now you can put the power back on. And it works. Now after about a minute it's going to detect that it's got light. And once it detects that it has light, the light should go back off. But that is a complete working light.